Jehoshaphat was one of Judah's best kings. He destroyed the idols and taught the people to return to God and obey the law. But he made a terrible mistake that ruined his son, King Jehoram's life, and almost wiped out their entire legacy. He married Jehoram to Athaliah, the daughter of Israel's worst king. Within ten years of becoming queen, Athaliah had almost wiped out the entire royal line of Judah. That story, coming up. Joseph Clampett here with the Stewardship.com YouTube channel, where we unpack what the Bible says about money, possessions, and wealth in 10-minute videos. Today's story is about how King Jehoshaphat's legacy was almost wiped out by a single mistake. Early on in the story about Jehoshaphat, there's a small detail that doesn't seem important at the time, but later it will have huge consequences. In 2 Chronicles chapter 18, it tells us that Jehoshaphat sought a marriage alliance with King Ahab of Israel, and so Jehoshaphat married his son Jehoram, who was actually his firstborn son and would later become king. He married his son to Athaliah, Ahab's daughter, so that they could have so that he could have an alliance with Israel. Now, when we go several chapters later to chapter 20, 21, we find out that Jehoram was Jehoshaphat's firstborn son, and so he would be the one to succeed Jehoshaphat when Jehoshaphat dies. And that whole story of that succession was such a disaster. When Jehoshaphat died, uh, Jehoram's f pretty much his first act on taking control of the nation was to go kill all his brothers. So all the other sons of Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, King Jehoram went out and killed presumably so that nobody would be competing with him for the throne. After that, he led Judah into idolatry. He set up you know, high places where they would worship uh, idols and gods that were not the God of Israel. He really led the, led the nation in this idolatry. In doing so, he undid a, so much of Jehoshaphat's work because jo Jehoshaphat, his father, had done a lot to remove these idols from Israel, help people to learn the, learn the law of Moses again, and start to follow that law again. What was the cause of all the terrible things King Jehoram did? Let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 21, verse 6. And he walked in the way of the kings of Israel, as the house of Ahab had done, for the daughter of Ahab was his wife. And he did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. So definitely King Jehoram had some culpability himself. I mean, he made his own decisions to do all these wicked things. But the Bible makes clear that his wife, Queen Athalia, and by extension, King Jehoram's you know, association with the house of Ahab was a big part of the reason for all the terrible things he did, killing his brothers and leading, uh, leading the whole country into idolatry. Eventually, King Jehoram paid dearly for all the evil that he'd done in Israel. Uh, Elijah sent him a letter saying that a plague would come upon him and everything he had, and that King Jehoram himself would end up dying by a disease of the bowels. So he had this painful two-year disease where eventually he died because his bowels came out of his body. Pretty terrible. Now when her husband died, Queen Athaliah's son, Ahaziah, ended up taking the throne. And there was not much difference between Ahaziah and his father, King Jehoram, nor his mother, Queen Athaliah. Uh, let's read 2 Chronicles chapter 22, verses 3 and 4. He also walked in the ways of the house of Ahab, for his mother was his counselor in doing wickedly. He did what was evil in the sight of the Lord, as the house of Ahab had done. For after the death of his father, they were his counselors to his undoing. So again, we see this association with the house, house of Ahab causing so much damage in Judah. It ruined King Jehoram's life, and now it's ruining his son's life, Ahaziah. And the main 
conduit, the main place this association comes in is through Queen Athalia. So again, remember, this is all King Jehoshaphat's fault. You know, a couple generations ago now, Jehoshaphat made the decision to ally with Ahab by giving his son to marry Ahab's daughter, Athaliah. This was all Jehoshaphat's fault, even though he was such a great king, he did so many good things. But, wow, what a terrible mistake. So now, back to Ahaziah. He went on a visit to his family in Israel. You know, again, the family of Ahab who was ruling Israel. And on that visit, he died. Um, his, his uncle was king of Israel at the time. He went down to visit, and he died on that trip. Athaliah, his mother, is still back in Jerusalem, in Judah. And at that point, she takes the opportunity to declare herself basically queen and that she's going to be the ruler of Judah. At that point, she tried to kill everyone in the royal family, even and especially her own grandchildren, because they would threaten her control over the kingdom. Now, only one of Athaliah's grandchildren, named Joash, survived to carry on the line of Jehoshaphat, Jehoram, Ahaziah, the line even going all the way back to David. Just Joash was left. He was hidden. Um, that's a story for another day. He was hidden from Athaliah and survived. You know, this story reminds us that we can never predict the precise chain of events that result from our decisions. You know, life always unfolds in unexpected ways. But we can base our decisions on biblical principles. Those principles act like a solid foundation that support our life and our legacy, no matter what storms or challenges come. If you need something to cheer you up after today's depressing story, uh, watch this next video up here to see how Ruth and Boaz left a legacy that renewed Israel and eventually the whole world. Thanks for watching. Please subscribe if you learned something from this video, and I'll see you in the next one.